Hello again. Thank you for taking the time to watch these. Uh, I know they'll be a great help and blessing to you now, and especially in the years to come as you grow in Christ. This lesson that I'm going to give you today is so important. It's on our enemy, uh, the devil, Satan, uh, the dragon, the wicked one. Many names he's called. We have an enemy. We actually have three enemies. We have the world, this world system we have to fight against. We have our flesh, the daily battle of the flesh. We need to teach on that sometime. But we also have the devil, and the devil hates you. The devil wants to destroy you. Luke 22, 31, the Bible says, Jesus says to Peter, Satan had desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. Um, listen carefully to that and put your name in there. John, Fred, Susie, Satan hath desired to have you. Satan wants you. He wants to destroy you. He wants to sift you as wheat. He wants to take you and cast you out, make your life worthless, throw it away. Listen, you only have one life. The world has a statement, YOLO. You only live once. You do only live once on this earth, so it ought to be for God. It ought to be for Christ. That's the best life you'll have anyway, the most fun you'll ever have, the most joy you'll ever have. God says he has pleasures at his right hand forevermore. The world has pleasures. They're only for a season. The Bible says there's pleasure in sin for a season. After the pleasure of sin is gone, now comes the consequences. The consequences of sin are a whole lot bigger and a whole lot more than the pleasures were. God has pleasures at his right hand forevermore. You want the pleasures of God. Satan wants to tempt you with the pleasures of this world to draw you away so he can mess up and destroy your life. The Bible says he sets snares. Um, one of the things that um, the devil is called is his tricks, the wiles of the devil. Remember Wiley Coyote with the Roadrunner? All the tricks he would plan, all the things he would do, called Wile e. Coyote. Satan has his bag of tricks, okay? The wiles of the devil or the tricks of the devil. By the way, let me tell you, he is a lot better than Wile e. Coyote. Um, he is good at what he does. If you've worked a job for a year, how good are you at that job? How about five years? How about 10 years? How about 30? How about 30 years doing the exact same job? How good would you be at that job? How about 6,000 years? How good would you be? Satan's job for 6,000 years has been deceiving men. That's what he does. And he is very good at it, okay? He's very good. The Bible says many strong men have been slain by one of the tricks he uses uh, is uh, women against men. Uh, many strong men have been slain by them. Satan is very good and he knows what to use to be able to mess us up. And he will entice us with all those things. Now, we never have to lose. Okay, we have inside of us the Holy Spirit of God. The Bible says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So we never have to lose. We have the Holy Spirit of God who will guide us into all truth, who will convict us, who will bring things to our remembrance. So we never have to fall. We have the Holy Spirit of God inside of us. It's greater than Satan who's in the world. Uh, we also have the Word of God to guide us, principles. We have the Church of God. We have uh, a pastor to help us. We have the armor of God to be able to put on. Um, I want you to write this reference down and then go look at it when you have a chance. Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6, starting with verse number 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. I'm not going to take time to teach this whole thing, but this is our armor. I was in the military, and you had uh, armor you had to wear. You had your helmet uh, of Kevlar, okay? We have our helmet of salvation, the Bible says here. We, um, we have, in the military, we had a Kevlar vest we had to wear. Um, we have the, the breastplate of righteousness and the, the shield of faith. Um, we have the armor of God that we get to wear that, uh, as long as we're going forward for God, we never have to take a hit. We've got our helmet. We have our sword, our shield, our breastplate. Lord's going to bat with truth, feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace. If we put on all that armor, then we're going to be able to win every time, okay? Let me give you quickly what those are. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10, uh, going down to verse number 18, if you want to look at that. Let me give you quickly what they are. By the way, the Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Um, one of the ways Satan tries to trick us is to get us to fight people. And people at church, the pastor, assistant pastor, Sunday school teacher, some Christian at church that looked at you wrong or judged you or did something they shouldn't have done. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. When there's a problem between flesh and blood, realize it's not that person but the devil behind them trying to mess you up. If you recognize that, you're not going to let them get you. What happens in church and somebody uh, uh, says something to you and you get offended, you get hurt, but you know this lesson. 
then you realize, okay, that's not that person. That's Satan who's using them to try to mess me up. It's not going to work. I'm going to stay forward doing what God wants me to do. Very, very important. Very key. Okay. God says to put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. Um, and so your Lord is good about with truth. Okay. The word of God is true. Jesus is truth. And your life ought to be true. No false, no error, no lies. Lord is good about with truth. Having on the breastplate of righteousness. That's living right. You ever heard the phrase, you have chinks in your armor? This coat of mail, it's called, uh, which is little pieces of metal woven in together so you could move and then when you're fighting but if something hit it it would block that but if something got hit and it tore a hole in that you may have a hole in your armor be careful about your righteousness if there's a hole in it satan will aim at that and try to destroy you and hurt you so your breastplate of righteousness living right doing right um then um uh, having your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Um, this is simply telling people how to go to heaven. This is witnessing to others, showing them how to be saved. Such an important thing and such an important lesson uh, to be able to do. But when you go and show people how to go to heaven, it, it is a weapon that you can use. Um, I preach a sermon called The Barefoot Soldier. Imagine going into the military and getting all your clothes and gear, but them never giving you any boots. How would you be able to fight? How good would you be? How profitable? Uh, you'd only be concerned about yourself by every step that you took instead of being able to fight the battle, win, help, and protect your fellow person. Uh, this is a big deal. We need to witness. We need to tell people how to go to heaven for their sake, but also for ours. It's one of our weapons. Having the shield of faith wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fire darts of the wicked. Satan's going to throw so much stuff at you, but the shield of faith, they just fall off of it. Never even bothers it. Shield of faith. What does that mean? God saved you. God's called you. God has a plan for you. God has a purpose for you. And nothing is going to interfere with that. I'm going forward toward God. I don't care what you throw at me. Nothing's going to stop me from going forward and doing what God wants me to do. Um, and uh, the helmet of salvation. I'm saved. I can't lose it. I'm on my way to heaven. We've already talked about that. That helmet of salvation, knowing I'm saved. If I slip and I fall, I get back up because I'm still saved. Okay? Um, how important that is. And so, um, um, and then the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. The sword is an offensive weapon. We go after. We have the word of God to be able to go after the enemy with that. Uh, the Bible says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Satan came to Jesus and after a 40-day fast to tempt him in the wilderness. Three times it came to him, three times Jesus quoted scripture at Satan and Satan departed from him for a season. That's what we're supposed to do. How do we win against the enemy of the devil? We quote scripture. Whatever you struggle with, whatever you have a hard time with in the flesh or in the world, then we need to get scripture to be able to combat that, okay? Uh, let's say you have a problem with lust. Many Bible verses about that. Job said, I made a covenant with mine eyes. Why then should I think upon a maid? Jesus said, if you look upon a woman to lust after her, you committed adultery in your heart already. So to be able to quote those scriptures back when Satan tempts us, you have a problem with alcohol. Then you go to the Bible and you see the verses on alcohol. Um, wine is a mocker. Strong drink is raging. Whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. Those things are able to help you, the word of God. And then it says, praying always with all prayer and supplication. Prayer is a weapon that we use against the devil. And so the armor of God, the word of God, God, um, the church of God, the pastor, the people to help us, we should never lose against the devil. We lose because we don't realize we're in a battle. We don't realize we're in a war. We don't realize we're in a fight. We don't realize we have an enemy that's shooting at us. Okay? If someone wakes up on the battlefield and they forget where they are and they just take a walk, an uh, afternoon stroll, uh, and walk across the uh, uh, enemy lines into the enemy, are they in trouble? How come? They're not ready to fight. They don't have their armor on. They don't know they're in a battle. And that is why most Christians fail. Because they're saved, but they don't realize in this world, we are in a battle. It's a war. And Satan wants to destroy you. Don't let him do that. Okay? Very important lesson. When I was in the military, one of the things we had to study were the enemy's planes, the enemy's tanks, and the enemy's weapons. We had to know what they had and what they were going to use against us so we could spot them. We need to make a study of our enemy 
to make sure that we know his tricks and wiles so he never messes us up. Now these lessons are not uh, uh, able to give you an exhaustive study of all of these. They get you started on them. Uh, you need to make a study in the Bible and you need to let your pastor and teachers help you when you have questions or problems or when Satan is trying to, uh, to mess you up. Okay, God bless you. We'll see you next time. Thank you.